One of the police killings that sparked last night's protest in Dallas took place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 37-year-old Alton Sterling was killed Tuesday night by two Baton Rouge police officers. David Begno spoke with Quinetta McMillan, the mother of Alton Sterling's son, and L. Chris Stewart, the family's attorney. He asked them about the effect the video of Sterling's death has had on the family. Do you believe that it's important for the public to see the graphic video of how he died? I most certainly think it's important for the public, but not for children. Did you want your son to see that video of how his dad died? No way. How did he see it? I mean, he's 15 years old. There's no way I could have hit that. I didn't show it to him. Just getting on his phone, listening to music off of YouTube. So there was that night where the video surfaced, right? I mean, literally, it was put out by that group. It surfaced. Did your son see the video before you even knew it existed? Yes. What was that moment like when he came to you? He just came to me and he was just screaming. And he said, Mama, I want my daddy. My daddy. Mama, why my daddy? As a mother, I, I cannot help him justify why he's daddy. I just held my child and I immediately started praying with him. And I let him know it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That's a part of him I, I can never give back. There's a hole that I can never fill. Because I'm just his mother. Do you see any justification for the shooting that left your son's father dead? I wonder, do you believe in your heart that, that the officers intended to kill him? I do. You believe they intended to do it? Yes. The video shows it. I mean, he's there with his hands up. He's doing everything that they ask him to do. And if everybody just listened to that video, he's asking, what did I do? What did I do? And then from that moment, he was cursed out like a dog. It just wasn't right. You know, we always have, um, in, in looking at the backgrounds of the police officers, we also looked at the background of Alton, and, you know, it's no secret he had a criminal history, a lengthy one. But do you think... Do you think there was a reluctance on his part? Do you think that he may have put up something of a fight because he was worried about being arrested? I just wonder what you have thought yourself over the last few days since it happened. No, I don't think that he put up a fight. I mean, anybody that has eyes and can see through both of them sees that. Hmm. Tell me about him. He sold CDs at the store, right? Correct. How long had he been doing that? He has been selling CDs for quite a while, Was between maybe six to five years. Is that how he made a living? That's how he made a living. Was that like his main job? Exactly. That was the only job. And he did well? He did wonderful. I mean, he seemed to be known. The former police chief of Baton Rouge told me, I knew CD man. I mean, he people well knew him known. by that name. Correct. Well liked? Well loved. 
ever violent? I'm not going to say he was ever violent, no. We're all humans. So, so I, I think what you're saying, if I'm understanding you right, is he could be violent at times. Is that what you're saying? No. Or he was no. never violent? No. Okay, so he was never violent? No. Okay, so what did you mean by he was human? Meaning, we all, time to time, can get mad. Right, right. But you never saw violence? Never. Um, you mentioned yesterday, Chris, about the body cameras. And there's one specific video where you see the officer reach down and pick up his body camera because it's clearly on the ground. Um, you said that you're not buying the idea that the body cameras fell off. Why? That actually looked like his microphone. And that's what we're going to you know, get more details about. That looked like his microphone, his radio that comes with the strap that he radios in for backup, for whatever it may be. It looks like his radio. My understanding is that the body cams used by the officers down here are just a self-contained box that doesn't have a wire, that doesn't fall off and dangle, as they quote it. Um, but we'll figure that out from the investigation. But, you know, if you watch the video, it looks like his radio. Do you believe we'd be sitting here talking about what happened to Alton Sterling if it wasn't for that video? Of course not. Of course not. And, and that's the, the power of videos. You know, that's what happened in Minnesota. That's what's happening now. That's what makes you feel the pain for the officers and their families in Dallas is the videos from the people on scene because you actually see what's going on and you can feel the pain of what's going on. Do you believe we would be sitting here today talking if it were not for those videos? Absolutely not. So you think the videos is what generated the outrage and... You know, what do you think would have happened had there not been a video showing what occurred? It just would have been the end of it. There would have been no justification on anything. But it's a done deal. That's have, how I feel. Have you met the person who recorded that video? I have not. What would you say to them? I would say I appreciate you coming forward with that video because now it's gonna help my son have closure because there are a million and one questions that he has that mommy can't answer. I most definitely would love to meet the person that sent in that video. Even for the second video, there was more graphic things on that video that you really didn't see on that first. Chris, there, it's a, it's a, as you know, it's a high bar when it comes to the feds and civil rights investigations. Do you believe initially, preliminarily, what we see so far, that there will be enough to substantiate the claim that Mr. Sterling's civil rights were violated? There definitely should be, just like with Walter Scott. Um, and we were very excited and happy when he was indicted by the federal um, also. So I think this is another... Uh, great case for what groundwork would justice. you lay, what groundwork would you lay out to say this was clearly a civil rights violation? I mean, they can clearly see it. Right. They can clearly, you know, that's the great thing about now the multiple angles of the video. But legally, just some bullet points for me on the legal things that, as an attorney, you would recognize and say, okay, that's an indication. That's an indication. Um, first of all, he had given up. He wasn't resisting arrest. Right. You know, we're watching the scene. You know, the problem is in a lot of these situations if a person is fighting the officers or has a weapon right. pointed at them, that authorizes that officer the, to then use lethal force. Right. Um, you know, his life is in danger. Other people around him lives are potentially in danger. And then he's authorized at a certain point to use that level of force. In this situation, his arms are up. He's given up. It looks like he's just standing there. He's suddenly tackled, taken down, mm -hmm. and then pent to the ground and executed. At that point, his civil rights have been violated. He cannot, he was never given the opportunity to be taken into custody, period. I didn't see anybody reach for handcuffs at all to try and cuff his arm that was already pent, roll him over. Not once did I see them reach for handcuffs. I saw them reach for their gun. And that's the problem. How crucial do you think that audio will be? 
on those body cameras. The audio is going to be important, but the most important thing, period, is going to be the surveillance footage from the store, which was taken by the department. Which will show the initial encounter. So the moment they walked up to him. And the entire thing. We already went out there and the angle of that camera would have caught the entire situation from start to finish. What does what happened in Dallas do to your case here in Baton Rouge? Who knows? I mean, I'm quite sure that it's harmed it, um, but it, it's harmed every other police minority interaction because it's now given justification for some officers to use unnecessary force in their mind, the bad ones. It's now given justification for the public to maybe turn away and not pay attention to what's going on because they think of the tragedy in Dallas. It's the few bad apples that always destroy the bunch.